career uh, on the NASCAR circuit. Lloyd had 49 starts uh, in the NASCAR uh, circuit. His first race was in 1949 at the Heidelberg Speedway outside of Pittsburgh. He, he finished sixth in his very first race driving for Julian Busink from Findlay Lake. In 1950, Lloyd scored a win on the NASCAR circuit in Winchester, Indiana. He had a second that year at Langhorne, a second and a third at Vernon, New York, a third at Canfield, Ohio, a fourth at Hamburg Fairgrounds. In that year, 1950, Lloyd finished third. That year, 1950, Lloyd finished third at the Daytona Beach course, went back when they were running on the sand and the road on uh, A1A finished third on the beach course in 1950. That year, the Grand National Champion was Bill Rexford from Conowango, New York, a member of the Chautauqua Sports Hall of Fame. In points in 1950, was Fireball Roberts from Daytona Beach. Finishing third in 1950 was Lee Petty from Level Cross. Or was it Randleman at the time? <laughs> it's like Jamestown Lakewood, apparently. And finishing fourth in the Grand National Circuit, 1950, Lloyd Moore. Following the year, 1951, Lloyd's top finishes were a third and a fifth at Dayton, Ohio, a fifth at Grand Rapids, Michigan, and another fifth at Shippenville, Pennsylvania. In 1952, he had a second and a fourth at Dayton, Ohio. I'm seeing a lot of good runs here at Dayton, Lloyd. I'm sure you're going to tell us something about Dayton and why you were so tough there. After 1952, Lloyd only ran a few more races and finally called it quits after five years on the NASCAR circuit to spend more time with his family. Run 100 miles on dirt track, you come in. You didn't know exactly what color you were. <laughs> you had sand all over the place. It was, it was fun. A lot of stories, but I don't think we'd better take the time now. <laughs> living NASCAR driver certainly has a lot of stories to tell and he left everybody hanging on December 11th. Um, I went to a track where Lee was supposed to be I always hunted him up right because we were we were just like that you know mm -hmm. but get us out on the track and, and then we and then we were bitter enemies yeah <laughs> but uh, 
Lee, Lee was a nice fellow, good, good to talk to. And uh, well, I, I uh, spent a good many hours, that is, if he figured it all out, just talking to Lee. We went to Dayton, Ohio, and uh, he beat us there. And when we when we pulled into track, of course, it always has to observe things and look things over. But uh, after we got settled in one thing and I started to work on the car, I Lee come over and he says, "Hey." Why don't you take my car and run around the track? I said, no, Lee. I said, I wouldn't do that. But I thought that was a, that was pretty good. We was almost strangers, right. friendly strangers. We got to going up the back stretch and Lee came up and booted me in the rear end. And uh, it didn't bother me too much, but when it was over, I went up to Lee and I says, uh, what the, what are you trying to do? Ain't there room enough on the track for you two? Oh, he says, forget it. He says, that was just an accident on purpose. <laughs> 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 but how I got into NASCAR was Bill Rexford, I knew him. And he stopped over here one night and he says, I want to borrow your helmet. I said, borrow my helmet? What are you going to do? He says, I'm going to race for Buick, er, for Busing. Busing, yeah. Busing. I said, where's that? He says, it's over at Langhorn. I said, how in the dickens did you get tangled up with him? Oh, and then we went on Jabbert's Born. All of, uh, in the back of my mind was Fulton. How did he get in there? I'll bet I'm going to try it. Man Against Man, Days of Racing. Jamestown Post Journal, September 26th, 1964. Auto racing's a funny business. It's a never-ending toss-up of who's got the edge, driver or car. Races were a regular Sunday affair with the names of the day. Bud Finale, Lloyd Moore, Carl Pentagro, and Al Mancuso along with Elliot Ellis. They all raced at Penny Royal, including Billy Rexford, Grand National NASCAR champ of 1950. But Moore was the best, according to Ellis. The Frewsburg bus driver recorded the track record for the 5 8 mile with a water injection vehicle in the late 40s. Before that, you drove the local dirt track. Yeah. Uh, and then some real legendary dirt track. What was Satan's? Satan's Bowl of Death, yeah. What was that like? And where was it? Well, it was over towards uh, Busty Sugar Grove, off the, out in the woods out there. Yeah. That was an old track. You, you started out on the flat, and then you go up a hill, around through the woods back down through a mud puddle, <laughs> <laughs> back up the hill. They crowded me one time, and I took off right sideways and went up in the, up the hill in the different tracks. <laughs> so right <laughs> off the course. So right off the course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What were some of the other course tracks around here? I live in James, Jamestown, and then there was... Where was that? It was up off of North Main Street. I don't know as I could tell you right now where it is. And uh, then there's Jamestown. They, used to be, they call it Jamestown over towards uh, oh, Gary in the, oh, in the flats over there. There's right. another track over in there. And uh, then there was a track over in Onaville right in the gravel pit. And uh, all these little tracks around here, I, <laughs> I had a lot of fun with them. But Monroe County Fairgrounds—that's all east of us. Mm -hmm. 
uh, run, we run on that. That's where uh, three, four guys from Rochester come down in their cars. Mm -hmm. They had some nice painted up jalopies. Right. And they they kind of made it rough for us. But it was racing, it was fun. That's all we wanted to do anyhow. One noon, by lunch hour, I run up the road. He had to use car lot up the road just a ways. And uh, I went in there, but his brother-in-law was there. Julie wasn't there. I told him to have Julie stop down the garage. Uh, I wanted to see him, mm -hmm. for first chance he got. So. Two, three days later, he stopped in. And uh, he, he says, I hear you want to drive a race car. And I said, yeah. I said, I've been driving these jalopies around the different tracks. He says, I'm going to get a race coming down in Heidelberg. And he says, uh, would you like to go along with it? Go down there. And I said, sure, I'll go down. We got it down there, and our car was, wasn't geared right for that track, so he, he sent the car clear back to Finley Lake and had his mechanics change the gear ratio out of another car. Next day, the car was ready, and we took it back to Pittsburgh. And you actually drove on the, the car, the NASCAR, right? Oh, yeah. That's the only way we got them there. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, we took it back down the next day and and uh, got in a race. And, but in the race, <laughs> sad part of it was I got I got beat out by a woman. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, Sarah. He was a quiet, kind of a quiet guy, too. Mm -hmm. Him and Julie was kind of close, because Julie could uh, talk more about racing than I did. Actually, I wanted to get in there and drive, and he, he just wanted to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> From 49, I was 30-some years old when I started. Sure. Yeah. How far would you have to go for the races? all over the country. You didn't tow it. <laughs> you drove it, and when you got there, you took the muffler off <laughs> and strapped the door shut. And then you would have had a race car. Okay. Driving down the highway in a race car? Yeah, the police would uh, would cast a quite a wary eye at you, and uh, <laughs> sometimes they'd kind of stalk you. Yeah? Hope that you would go too fast. You never did that, did you, though? Well, <laughs> occasionally. No, we'd drive there. We'd get up in the middle of the night and take off and get, go to a race, drive home. In the same car you raced? The same car we raced. <laughs> yeah, clear from Michigan, clear from Indiana. We went up into Canada. Uh, then we went Langhorn and Pittsburgh. Julie was sponsoring two cars. Mm -hmm. Now, Rexford was from where? He kind of wanted to go Valley. Kind of wanted to go Valley. Yeah. So he's, what kind of car did you normally drive? I always wanted to drive a Ford product. Right. Of course, Julie would give me a General Motors once in a while, but so you Saturday night you would drive to yeah. the racetrack, yeah. literally pull into the pits, probably sign up, yep, and go. We can go. <laughs> Did you have to qualify at all, or could just? Uh, sometimes we qualified, and sometimes we just went by points and stuff like that, and lined us up that way. Julie, Julie was riding with me, and Rexford was. Following us, we was cruising along there, probably speed limit. And Rickford went by. And he was flying pretty good clip. Right. I sat there, didn't pay no attention to it. Julie, 
You gonna let that car go by you? <laughs> I forget what we was driving in, but I floorboarded that thing. We went down that turnpike, two big numbers on the side of our car. <laughs> now that's an image. <laughs> I got up behind him and I didn't want to stretch it no farther. We uh, we let him know that we he would not run us anyhow. <laughs> That's incredible. So there you are in the throughway. <laughs> Racing. <laughs> Qualify. Qualify. <laughs> <laughs> we got the pole position to it. <laughs> Sometimes we rode together, like when we went down south, I, we tried to get in the same car mm -hmm. that we was going to race. Yeah. <laughs> I just visualize this, you know. You've got to be exhausted when the day is done. Not only do you drive all the way down there to, say, Heidelberg, get on the track, you race 100 miles, and come home. Ain't got to be a tired guy. <laughs> we didn't did. it bother you being so just young and? Yeah, we didn't uh, didn't have sense enough to know better, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You talk about qualifying; it rings a bell. I told you we didn't know how it was happening. Right. But uh, <laughs> I had the he had the wife's Mercury. He'd run out of cars, I guess. So he took the wife's Mercury down, and I was qualifying that. And then tracks, they wasn't exactly perfect, you know. So you were, you were qualifying Julie's Ju wife's Mercury. Mercury. Oh, nice. Rolled it over. <laughs> 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 and that night, they got their news around as I broke my neck. Mm -hmm. They came back up here and I broke my neck. But it, it wasn't that serious. I, I was flopping around inside there and my nose was down in the corner at one time. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, now, was that, was that your worst wreck? Uh, <clears throat> yes, I would say that was the worst one. Daytona, the first one, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, on, on the sand. T uh, describe that. Well, it was a four-mile four stretch, mm -hmm. four-mile track. And uh, we started out down on the beach. And uh, you went up a track for a mile. A little better than a mile. North turn was turned nothing but sand. Sharp turn. Then you went back on the south turn. And that was uphill for a grade blacktop. Then you broke over the hill. Went downhill into the south turn. And uh, around the bend. And uh, that was a Flag, flag one, he stood right down there. But you go flying down that back stretch, you couldn't even see the speedometer hand, knowing that you've got a big pile of sand to jump into. <laughs> and trying to climb the bank on the inside of the track, and people's feet hanging down there. <laughs> and, but that first year of the Daytona 500 was what, 1951? I would say so. Yeah. Darlington was about the first track we got onto that was really asphalt. What was your car number? 59. 59. Did you have that throughout? Yep. How much did you have to modify the car? Uh, reinforced. Uh, Wheels, right? Put an extra plate on the inside, reinforce them. And that's about the limit. Put a safety belt in, whether it's a piece of rope or a piece of leather, <laughs> piece of chain or something. 
<laughs> something for a safety belt. A uh, habit of uh, putting a screen right in front of the radiator mm -hmm. with a wire running out. And after you'd made two, three laps, well, you'd reach out and pull that screen off the radiator, pull it inside and stick it down inside you. That would keep some of the mud from plugging up the radiator. A lot of them was a mile track. Mm -hmm. And uh, or a mile race, you might say, 100 mile race. That's what I wanted to say. And you didn't uh, actually have to stop. Just keep on going. Your gas usually lasted. And uh, so we never had to make too many pit stops. Now that's interesting. So the normal NASCAR race in those days was 100 miles? 100 miles. And so. Theoretically, the gas could take you. Yeah. Well, in 1950, uh, I was just reading here that you won a, uh, a half mile dirt track in Winchester, Indiana. You won the race. Yeah. Yeah. You remember uh, how much money you won? Well, it might have been $1,000, it might have been 1500 But the wife says, What did I do with all that money? <laughs> Well, all that money wasn't mine. <laughs> Car owner got some. Mm -hmm. Lots of times it was divided three ways instead of twice. Right. So, but Julie uh, paid all the transportation fees and stuff like that. But we didn't get rich. Ohio, Bain Bridgers. Track down there. Bill and I got put on the tail end of the race mm -hmm. to start. I don't know how they figured that, but anyway, that's where we was. Well, during the race, we kind of, both of us had, was lucky and worked ourselves up through. Good golly, Bill was ahead and I was second. We run along here and getting towards the Last end of the race, just a few laps left. Julie came out with a signboard. Uh, 60, I think Bill's number was 60. It's 60 goal. Didn't say nothing about me. He knew I was just dumb enough to try it myself. But. Uh, Bill took off, mm -hmm. and then I took off after me, and for the last, oh, maybe eight or nine laps, we was going pretty good clip, and uh, I was right on his tail. I couldn't get by him, but I really chased him. When we stopped the race, he got jumped out of his car and went up and shook his fix fist in Julie's face. What's the idea of sticking him onto me right on the tail end of the race? <laughs> he, he, Julie told him, he said, well, you come down here to race, didn't you? <laughs> so, so much for teamwork. So much for teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then uh, that's the way that wound up. <laughs> Bill got huffy. He could get bad pretty quick. Mm -hmm. You had great success. Yeah, I did do that in 50, 52, I guess I was fourth. Rex, that's the year Rex won the championship. Right. And uh, I got a 52. Julie was car owner. There's three Yankees. Went down there and cleaned house. Got a reputation. And... Uh, well, I bet the good old boys didn't like that. Well, they they never, they always treated us pretty decent, yeah. Today, as I'm talking to you, you are the oldest surviving NASCAR driver. Yeah. And you were there day one, and as you remember the good old days, is kind of what was the highlight? What is the reflection? It was, uh, I never thought much about the honor of it. It was just the idea, me being in NASCAR, 
at the time when they were hauling moonshine mm -hmm. and uh, doing their thing out in the woods, cops chasing them and one thing or another. I was in on that period of time, so from then on in, why it commenced to be more civilized, you might say. Mm -hmm. But uh, there was a good, good bunch of guys that, that raced then. They were hard drivers. You got used to it all in the backwoods, driving fast with the cops right on their tail. But uh, I had, uh, I had the honor of, of being in on it when it started.